Hi, and welcome back to our Power BI Custom Visuals class. In this video, we're going to be looking at the histogram, talking about really what it is and why you would use it. First of all, a histogram is similar, at least in how it looks, to a column chart. So you have column charts inside of the Power BI desktop. It looks very similar, but it displays data differently. Really, the pur purpose of a histogram is to be able to show you the distribution of occurrences over the range of values that you have. So as an example here, you can see in my slide deck, I can see a list of each of these different age brackets or buckets of ages. You know, you can see the ages between 0 and 4 and 4 to 8 and 12 to 16, so on and so forth. And I'm seeing the number of occurrences of those ages as the height of the bar here, or the size of the bar, or column here in this case. So the histogram is great because it's going to allow you to see the number of occurrences or the frequency of data that, as it appears in your data set. It's also great because it also allows you to, to see things like data outliers. So if I had someone that showed up as the age 125, for example, that obviously would have an extra bar maybe farther out or an extra column showing further out on this chart that we're looking at. And so it would be very obvious as a data outlier and would help me be able to determine what's going on and do I need to go investigate the data even more. Now, the histogram here that we're going to be looking at is developed by Microsoft. So let's go ahead and spend some time and take a look at how to download it, import it, and use it. All right, so your first step is going to be to go to the Power BI Custom Visuals Library. You'll do that by going to visuals.powerbi.com, and that'll take you to the gallery that we're looking at here. Once you get to the gallery, you'll want to scroll down to the bottom, where I'm at right now, and you'll select the histogram here, and you can actually download the custom visual. So you'll select to download the visual. You can also download some samples that they provide to you as well. Now, once you download it, you'll then go back over to the Power BI desktop, which I'll go over to now here as well. And we'll go ahead and import the custom visual and walk you through how we can use it. So first things first, let's go ahead and import the custom visual. I'll do that by hitting the little ellipses here in the visualizations pane. And I'll, yes, I'll go ahead and say yes, I know I'm importing a custom visual. And then go find where I've downloaded that custom visual here, which I have downloaded into a special folder here. I'll select that custom visual and hit OK. And you can see it now appears inside of my visualizations pane. Now first, before we go ahead and use the histogram, let's also bring in some uh, other ways of visualizing the data that we're looking at. And we're going to be looking at employee birth dates here, basically, and employee age. And so we're going to be using that to analyze and see where our distribution of values lays for our employees as far as their age brackets. Now we can do this, of course, by bringing in the data and then bringing it into a table and analyzing it that way. But a histogram is a great way to be able to visualize this particular type of data. So first things first, let's go get the data. We'll do that by going up to the Get Data section. And we'll be getting our data from Excel today. So go ahead and select Excel, and then hit Connect. Now when you do that, the data that we're going to be using, which you'll find on the bottom of this video, we're going to be using the data set here called Employee List. So go ahead and select Employee List for the data set, and click Open. Once you select that, you'll find that you can then select the roster spreadsheet here, which has some data already in it for our employees, including their names, their birth dates, and their ages. All right, once you have that, though, you can hit Load, and that'll bring that data into our data model. Our next step is then, I'd like to initially see this data in just a table. So that way we can see and verify that what we're going to see in the histogram is actually working. I'll go ahead and select the full name column from our field list on the right-hand side. And I'll also bring in the age of our employees and bring it into a table, which you can see it already did by default. Now you can increase the size of the table if you'd like by going to the formatting section. Here you hit format on the paintbrush. And I can change the size of the values here by going underneath general. And then maybe I want to bump this up a couple points so it's very easy to see. So we've got our initial data set in here. Now what I'd like to do is bring this into a histogram. So I'll bring in a histogram. You can see we imported our histogram here in the custom visuals pane a few moments ago. So I'll go ahead and select that. Make this a little larger so we can see it a little better. And then I'll select the two fields that we really need here, which is going to be the age and the full name, the same fields that we had inside of the table. So I'll start with age and then go ahead and select full name right behind it. And that way we're looking at here a count of the full names, which is just a count of all the records that I have. And then we're seeing buckets for our ages. So we're actually able to see here each of the age brackets that it's created for us. All right, so this is how the histogram works. It automatically discretizes, which is basically puts them in buckets for us. It automatically places them in buckets for us, which you can adjust. You can change the number of buckets that it uses here. In this, time, in this case, it used seven, but you can increase that if you'd like. So let's take a look at how you can actually customize the custom visual here. What are some of the formatting features that we have available to us? 
You can apply formatting changes by coming up to the paintbrush here in the middle of the visualizations pane here. If I select the paintbrush, there's quite a few things that you can adjust in here. You can, of course, take off the title. You can see the little toggle here for the title that turns on and off the title that you saw up there a moment ago. You can add a background color if you'd like. Same things you have in all the other custom visuals. You can lock, that, lock the aspect ratio. So if you don't want it to resize like this, you want to lock it in a certain proportion, you can do that by changing that a lock aspect ratio to turn it on. And that way, anytime you resize it, it keeps that aspect ratio that we just looked at. And then you could also do things like underneath the general, you'll find where you can change the number of bins, change whether you're looking at frequency or density. So check this out here. You'll see under general, there's a frequency setting, which is kind of off the page here a little bit. But if you turn off frequency, it'll change to actually showing you the density of the values. Probably makes sense for this one to actually look at frequency. So I'm going to leave that one as frequency. I'll note here you can also do things like increase the number of bins, though. So if I want to have more than just seven, which it gave me here by default, I can change the number of bins just by simply typing the no new number on top of the bins property here. So if I wanted 12 bins, I could type 12, and you can see that 12 now adjust inside the chart. Now it's automatically placing those values in the bins, but you can increase or decrease the number of total bins if you would like as well. What other things can we do here? Let's go ahead and minimize general, go down a little bit here. You can add a border around it if you'd like, if you care to have a border. You can also change the data colors. If you want to change the color of the chart, you can hit underneath data colors and change it to a different color if you'd like. Let's say I want to make it orange, for example, or this little peach color. I can change the color there easily there. You can also, if you go down a little bit further, you can also change the way the data labels are shown. So right now it's showing with two decimal places, which you can actually see the decimal places on here. Those decimal places showed up after I flipped between density and frequency. But if I'd like to get rid of those decimal places, I can simply change this from showing two decimal places to showing zero decimal places, and that way it'll kind of round it out for me. All right, so the other things that are interesting about the histogram is it is interactive. By the way, I am seeing some outliers in my data here, at least a little bit. But it is interactive. So if I wanted to, I can hover above it. I do see the values. So I can see the frequency here is 67 occurrences between the ranges of 43 and 47. And you can also select the values as well. If I actually click on this section of the histogram, you can see it filters down other elements of your chart. In this case, it filtered down my table to only show the values between 43 and 47. So basically, it's just showing you the higher value and then up to the prior point here as well. So you're going to see values of 65 to 69. It also depends what you should keep in mind is there is some rounding occurring in here. If there was an age that had some decimal places to it, that's also going to affect it. All right, so I'm going to uh, clear that filter by clicking in the background. Note, you can also make this go full screen. So I can make this go full screen a lot easier to read there. And that's pretty much how the histogram works. It's showing me a distribution of all the values that I have in my data set. All right, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll see you for the next custom visual.